All right, welcome back. Hopefully you guys took a look at examples one through four. Now we're going to take a look at examples five and six. There's 13 examples all together in this section, but this is part one. So here we go with examples five, six. Still hanging out with my buddy Pythagoras. Again, man, check him out on Google and stuff. He's got some pretty wild things going on over the course of his life. What a man. He contributed to math in so many cool ways. Here's where you're really going to get into some applications of Pythagorean theorem. A lot of times you'll see this kind of question. You get a ladder leaning or resting against a, a building, a house, and the base of the ladder is four feet away. Approximately how high above the ground is the top of the ladder? So first thing you always want to do with this kind of situation is draw a picture. So I'm going to draw a picture. So I'm going to make a right triangle. Bang, bang. Now the ladder, of course, is leaning up against the building. So my ladder is going to go right here. This part's going to be my ladder. And this part over here is going to be the house because it's leaning up against the house. And the part on the bottom, that's always the ground. Or usually the ground. I don't know what else you'd lean up against on the bottom part of it, but hopefully you're not up in the clouds somewhere. So there's my ladder. And I'm told my ladder is six feet feet. So I'm going to write 16 feet. All right, so that's no big deal. And the base of the ladder is four feet away from the house. So that's along the ground because that's where the base of the ladder is. The base is a fancy way of saying the bottom. So that's four feet. And what I want to know is approximately how high above the ground is the top of the ladder. So I'm trying to figure out this piece right here and we're going to call this just X. And that. So that's all you got to do for this. Now, set up your Pythagorean theorem. Our hypotenuse, 16 squared, is x squared plus 4 squared. Now, 16 squared, you should know that by now. 256 equals x squared plus 16. Now, when I subtract 16, I end up with 240. So I get that for my value of x squared. All right, so after you get done square rooting 240, you end up with about 15.491 for x. So we got to answer the question using a complete sentence. Bam, there it is. Top of the ladder is about 15.5 feet above the ground. Peace. We're done with this one, man. We only got one more example to do. Let's check out this example six. Now in six, it says find the area of an isosceles triangle with side lengths 10, 13, and 13 meters. So here we go. We got to label this thing. So here we go. This side is going to be 13, up a little m for meters. This side will be 13 meters. Now the base is going to have a length of 10 meters. Now, if you remember from previously, you take an altitude, drop that down, bam, bam. And that is going to make each one of these sides, it's going to be a perpendicular bisector. So that means this whole base of 10, that's going to get split in half. So this side is going to be 5 meters. And this side over here is going to be 5 meters. So that's going to be pretty cool. Now, to find the area of the triangle, i got to use this formula for area of a triangle. And that is area is 1 half the base times the height. Now, I don't know what the height is yet. That's an altitude that I just drew. And I know the base is 10. So I can kind of start this off a little bit. I've got 1 half of 10 times the height. But I don't know what the height is, so let's get after that. That's where this Pythagorean theorem comes in handy, so booyah. So what we're going to do is kind of look at this triangle right here. Uh, this little guy right in here, we're just going to look at that part. Now, this piece that I'm trying to find, the height, so I'm going to call it h this time instead of x, so that is going to serve as which piece? Is that going to be leg or is that going to be a hypotenuse? Well, that, the height, is going to be one of your legs. So here in my Pythagorean theorem, we would have 13 squared equals 5 squared plus h squared. And you can use any variable you want. I just chose h in this one for the height. Now 13 squared, 169 equals 5 squared, 25. And then plus h squared. Now when I subtract 25 from both sides, I'll end up with 144 for the value of h squared. Oh, this is going to be nice because check this out. When I square root 144 for the value of h, you get 12 for h. Now, just remember, be careful. We're not done. We've got to find the area of the piece. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 12. I'm going to put that in for h. Now, so my area is going to be 1 half of 10 times 
12. Now I kind of like to do this piece mentally because half of 12 is going to be 6. 6 times 10 is 60. So that's just going to be 60. I could also do half of 10 is 5 and then 5 times 12 is 60. Either way you do that you end up with 60. Now this is where you got to be really careful. Don't forget the units. Now since we're dealing with area we're going to have meters squared is our unit. So the area of the isosceles triangle with those side lengths is 60 square meters. Alright that's it for these two examples. Man, it's pretty easy stuff. You just got to take your time, do your drawing, substitute correctly in your Pythagorean theorem, and then make sure you, that you answer the question because you weren't all done finding H. Go back, make sure that you use the area formula for a triangle, and find out the area for this particular isosceles triangle. That's it. Pretty easy stuff. All right, I'm out on this one. See you guys for the next video. Peace.